Good evening, everyone. Welcome to a word from the Lord. James Offer here with you, running just a little behind. I want to say all the folks in Michigan, thank you for watching and tuning in. Hope you uh, are ready for another study from God's Word. We are so grateful that the brethren in Michigan will are popping us in, and we hope that we're being beneficial to you as we study God's Word together. Here's our content information. Uh, you, in those folks in Michigan, you may not, uh, this may not be convenient for you, but if you're ever down this way, here we are, 250 the Boulevard, Eden, North Carolina, 276-340-2653 is how you can reach me, or word from the Lord at gmail.com, and uh, we hope that you will uh, come in contact with us and let us uh, help you in any way. If you're in Martinsville, uh, Brother Eugene Edwards, uh, 276-806-6922. Uh, if you want to meet with a brethren there, they can get some information to you and uh, help you get to the building. Our 120 American Legion at Danville's where Mark and Micah are, and I know they too would be glad to assist you in any way to uh, help you study the Bible and, and uh, understand God's Word a little more. Of course, as Mark mentioned, Religious Review coming up tonight after the news, 1030 tonight after the news, and uh, we want you to uh, stay tuned for that, and we hope that you will certainly... Uh, uh, ask for copies of any of these programs that, that we might be showing. They're certainly free of charge, and we'll be glad to get them to you. <clears throat> I know that um, this is baseball season. I, I'm not a real uh, big baseball fan. Uh, don't watch a whole lot of it. Uh, I know enough to know what's going on. That's about it. But, you know, in baseball, whenever the pitcher is – having a good game, he's striking out individuals. He, they, the, the fans, they like to put up a whole list and keep count of his strikeouts, all right? And they, they use the, the letter K to represent those strikeouts. Well, as you know, we've been uh, having some dealings with the folks from the Ku Klux Klan. Mr. Eli James was here Sunday night, and we had a debate over some topics that he believes that he holds to in, in the Christian identity movement. And as a member, a former member of the KKK, he is not in an official capacity with them at this time, is what he told me. But <clears throat> nonetheless, he was the man they called to represent them when uh, some of the folks uh, uh, in this area who are in the, in, the, in the Ku Klux Klan, when they called, he, he's the man they called. And so he came down, so he was representing them. And so we had a discussion, and I thought it was a very good discussion. I thought we had uh, uh, some... Uh, very interesting things came out during that uh, during that discussion. If you'd like a copy of it, you can email me, uh, write me, call me, and uh, if you uh, uh, call one of those numbers and you just get and it goes to voicemail, just leave a message that that's what you would like. You'd like a copy of that debate, and uh, we'll be getting some made and <clears throat> and out to you as soon as we can. But I thought it was very interesting some of the things that that uh, he said, some of the things that he. Uh, espoused that it was very interesting uh, contrary maybe to what a lot of people believed and maybe more and I say more than likely that it was contrary to what most people would have thought that he believed so tonight we're going to use the, the baseball theme and we're going to just notice some strikeouts that Mr. Eli James uh, 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 had during this debate that we had Sunday night. Now, he said he's coming back. We'll be glad for him to come back, and uh, and maybe that will take place in the future. I don't know. But here's strike one. Strike one, and some of these things may be things that you remember us discussing in the, in the debate, and I wanted to uh, go over them again just to show you the, uh, the swings and the misses that were made on Mr. Eli James's behalf. Now, on his part. Now, here's strike one. Now, strike one has to do with misunderstanding a very important part of the Bible, and that is the genealogies. Now, friends, I know most of you, when you read the Bible, you probably get to the genealogies and you skip it because it's kind of boring, you think. It's kind of dry, just a lot of names, a lot of begats and begats and begats and and you want to be gone, so you skip over it. But I'm going to tell you, friends, you miss a very important part of the Bible when you don't pay attention to the genealogies. All right, when you skip over these things, you, you miss a lot. 
Now, here is where Mr. James struck out. Notice this. He said Esau married two Hittite women. Now, that's true. And he married into the Canaanite lineage. Well, that would be true too. But then he says Jews are descendants of Cain. Now, remember, he says Jews. When he says Jews, he's not talking about uh, Israel like, like we think, like the Bible talks about. He says the Jews are actually the descendants of, of Cain and Esau. All right? So, so he says they're different, uh, uh, different uh, uh, bloodline, different seed line. All right? But notice, the Canaanites and the Hittites, he says, are the descendants of Cain. All right? Now, we pointed out this sounds familiar. Cain, Canaanite, sound very familiar. But if you don't know, and if you don't know the genealogy record in the Bible, you might, you might buy into that. Now, here's what we pointed out. We showed this in our debate, and which one I'm used to having a pointer. Uh, uh, when I'm a teacher class, I have a pointer. But notice this. Here we have, here we have Cain, and we have, we have his lineage. Now, you can find this in Genesis 4. That's actually where, where um, uh, Mr. Eli James went to. He went to. he went to the genealogical record in Genesis 4, and he pointed out that these are descendants of Cain. He read that. That's true. But then, when we come to the Canaanites and the Hittites, we actually find that they are descendants of Noah. They are descendants of Seth. Here's Seth, the other son of, of Adam. And way on down at the bottom is where we find Ham. Now Ham is, is well over here. Here's Noah. And then you find, uh, uh, I've got a little delay here. Here's Noah and his son, Shem, Ham, and Japheth. Well, Ham is over here. And so we're going to, let me see if I can just maybe make that a little closer there. Here we go. Here we go. Here's Noah. Here's Ham. Here's Canaan. And here's Heth. Now, he seemed to, he seemed to, want, us to want you to believe. And I said he seemed to want you to believe that this was not true. As a matter of fact, he said that uh, the Canaanites were not descendants of Seth. All right? Now, so, so let's, just go to the, let's just go to the record. Let's go to the record. In Genesis chapter 10, verse 15. And Canaan, now this is Canaan, the son of Ham. And Canaan begat Sidon, his firstborn, and Heth, and the Jebusite, and the Amorite, and the Gergesite, and the Hivite, and the Archite, and the Sinite, and the, Ar and the uh, Arvidite, and the Zemarite, and the Hamathite. Afterward, and afterward were the families of the Canaanites spread abroad. Now these in the genealogical record there in Genesis 10 are listed as the sons of Canaan. Now, if we really, if you really don't believe that, that this is the genealogy of Ham, let's just go back and read it. Just make sure everybody's, we're all on the same page. All right. We're in Genesis 10. And we're going to come up here. We're going to go back to verse uh, 6. All right. Here we go. Genesis 10, verse 6. Let me see if I'm, I might make this a little bigger. I think. Nope. Yeah, there we go. All right, that's all she wrote. Genesis 10, 6. Sorry about that. Uh, <clears throat> I'm looking at delay. That's why I'm Sorry about that. All right. Now, here, the sons of Ham. Here's the sons of Ham. Cush, Mizram, Put, and Canaan. All right. And then, he, <clears throat> then we have listed the sons of Cush. All right. In verse 7. Well, we come on down to verse uh, uh, 15. Now, notice this. And Canaan. Now, here's the sons of Canaan. And that's what we just read. So the genealogical record shows that Ham, the son of Noah, is, uh, has a son named Canaan, and Canaan has sons named Sidon and Heth. Now these are the Hittites. If you look up the word Heth and Hittite, they come from the same word. Now that's the same argument he made about Cain. 
and, uh, and, the, and the Kenites, which we're going to look at in a minute. But nonetheless, this is the genealogical record. And you say, well, James, why is that so important? Why is that so important? Well, here's why it's so important. Because later on, when we get to, when we get to somewhere else in the Bible, we get to somewhere else in the Bible, we're going to find that these folks are going to be uh, associated or linked up with some other folks. Notice this. Uh, here we are, verse... Uh, I'm sorry. Let me go to verse... Uh, Genesis 15 and verse 19. Now, when we get to Genesis 15... Look what we find. We find the Kenites and the Kenizzites and the Cadmonites and the Hittites and the Perizzites and the Rephaims and the Amorites and the Canaanites and the Gergesites and the Jebusites. Now, Mr. James would have you believe that these are all different people, that they were not sons of Seth, that they were not sons of Seth. I think I may actually have him saying, they're not sons of Seth. Let me just see if I can play that for you so that I'm not misrepresenting him. All right, let's see here. Not sons of Seth. Uh, here we go. Let's just listen to it. Saying to your seed, to your descendants, have I given this land from the river of Egypt unto the great river, the river Euphrates, the Kenites, and the Kenizzites, and the Cadmonites, and the Hittites? They were already there in the land. And the Perizzites, and the Rephaims. Who were the Rephaims? They were the giants, the descendants of the fallen angels from Genesis chapter 6, the tribe of Gath was still alive in the days of David. Goliath was one of the few surviving members, showing we have race mixing going on between the Adamites and the fallen angels, verse 21, and the Amorites and the Canaanites and the Girgashites and the Jebusites. These are the Kenite, Canaanite tribes. They were not Adamites. All right, they were not Adamites, he says. Now, friends, I would draw to your attention the fact that we know what the Bible record says. And if you, rem if you remember who the sons of Cain were, look at this. The sons of Cain, if you go back to Genesis chapter 10 and verse 15, look at the names that you, you recognize. The Jebusites, the Gergeshites, the Amorites, the Hittites. These are all these are all listed as descendants of Cain, Canaanites. Now think about it. Over a period of time, is it not the case that families get bigger and they become known as, uh, as uh, another name? In other words, these are descendants that obviously would come from the ancestors that we do know. In other words, it makes sense that as you, as you spread abroad, and that's what the Bible says in Genesis 10, that these families were spread abroad, certainly as they marry and they, and they start increasing, that they're going to be called by different names. It certainly makes sense that just because you didn't know the Kenites back in Genesis chapter 10, that that doesn't mean that they were created from another race of people or that God created them. That's what Mr. James says. It makes sense. It would make more sense to say that the Kenites and so forth the Perizzites were all descendants of Ham or some of the sons of, of uh, uh, Noah like all of these other nations. You see? Why go to have a far-fetched idea? Well, there must have been some other race of people over here somewhere then because we've never heard of these people before. Well, hello. You know, hello. It started off, you have, it started off with three families. I'm sorry, four families. Noah and his three sons. Surely, as time goes on, you're going to have, have more families be involved. So, it makes more sense that these are the sins of Canaan, not Cain. Sins of Cain never made it across the flood. See? So, it, it pays to pay attention to the genealogies. Now, let me just show you. Let me just do a little teaching here. 
and just show you the benefit of paying attention to the genealogies. All right? Now, let's go back to Genesis chapter 10. And I want you to pay attention to uh, some of these some of these folks. All right, let me get back here to Genesis 10. Here we go. Heth. Now look at this. Here's Heth. Now, you might say, well, I don't know of anybody named Heth. You know what? Later on, if you pay attention in Genesis 10 to Heth, you're going to meet somebody named Uriah. Now, everybody knows who Uriah is. Uriah the Hittite. Uriah the Hittite was uh, the husband of Bathsheba. David had him killed. You see? Here's what, here's what we're talking about. You meet these people on down the line. You need to pay attention to genealogy. If you don't, you might buy into some of this foolishness that Mr. James was telling you. Well, you know, it was a local flood and we had other nation, races of people that God created. And boy, ne next thing you know, some, some Martians are going to come down. And that's basically what he said. He said the angel, angels came down and had sex with men. What else do you want to believe? I mean, that's something right out of the X-Files, you see? So, so here you go. Now you got the Hittites. Well, what about the Jebusites? What about the Jebusites? Do you know who the Jebusites are? Listen, if you pay attention to the genealogical record, you're going, you're going to know who these people are. God put it in there for a reason. See? Now watch this. In Joshua chapter 15, verse 8, look who we meet in Joshua 15. And the border went up by the valley of the son of Hinnom unto the south of the Jebusite. Who's the Jebusite? Well, I know he's a descendant of Canaan, who is the descendant, who is the son of Ham, who is the son of Noah, who is the son of, all the way back up to Seth, who is the son of Adam. They all came through Adam. And who is the Jebusite? The same is Jerusalem. Now you know, you know about Jerusalem, you've heard Jerusalem, but you may not have known that, well, the Jebusite was actually the inhabitant of Jerusalem. See how it works? If you don't pay attention to genealogies, you would miss that. You'd say, well, Jebusite, he's some, some uh, angel hybrid creature that came down because I heard Mr. James say that. Come on, people. Let's open your Bible. Let's do a little learning, see? It, it pays. It pays to pay attention, see? Now look at this. In, uh, let's, let's go back here to our, our text. Now look at this. What about the Hivite? What about the Hivites? Do we know anybody in the Hivites? Do we ever meet anybody in Hivites? Well, in Genesis 34, Genesis 34, I think we, we might have mentioned this. Notice this. In Genesis 34, Dinah, the daughter of Leah, which, which uh, she bare unto Jacob, went out unto uh, uh, to see the daughters of the land when she come, the son of Hamar, the Hivite. Here's the Hivites. See? So now we're meeting, we're meeting some of these distant relatives of Canaan or Ham or Noah or all the way back to Seth. Now he wants to say, oh no, no, no kin to Seth. Well, you know, I'm not buying into that. I know, I know the family tree. I know the genealogy. I read it. And I'm not going to believe some of this far-fetched idea that somebody came along and created another race when the Bible tells me clearly this is where these people came from. I can trace it. Now, you see how, it, how why it pays to know the, the biblical record? Why it knows to pay the genealogy? Uh, you might recall this too, back to the sons of Heth, when Abraham wanted to buy a plot of land to be buried in, he bought it from the Hittites. See? These people are in the land. Now, he wants to make a big deal about, well, they were already in the land. So what? I don't have a problem with they were already being in the land. Sure, they were already in the land. They were spread abroad, is what the Bible says. They all came from the sons of Noah, who came from Seth, who came from Adam. Don't buy into this stuff about there's some special bloodline running around. You know, everybody came through Adam. See how that works? need to pay attention. Now, you want to see how important genealogy is too? Let me give you one that's not in this. Back up. Let's back up to one of the sons of 
of uh, uh, Cush. In Genesis 10, in verse 14. Now these are the sons of Cush. Look at this. One of the sons of Cush was Kazluhim. Kazluhim. Out of whom came Philistim. Now who do you think the Philistims are? The Philistines. That's right. See? See, we meet them way back here in Genesis chapter 10. We know who the Philistines are, and they're always mentioned. You know, they're mentioned in the Bible as coming from Kaphtor, one of the, one of the other brethren. See? Now, wouldn't it make sense that it'd be like saying somebody, you know, somebody Smith came from Martinsville. Maybe his brother's name was Martin. And Martin created a, a village named Martinsville, and somebody from Smith... You know, Smith came out of Martinsville. Well, they're close together. Philistim came out of Captorum. Notice this. In Je uh, Jeremiah, let's just look at our text. Jeremiah 47, verse 4. Because of the day that cometh the spoil of the Philistines, and cut off from Tyrus and Zidon every helper that remaineth, for the Lord will spoil the Philistines, the remnant of the country of Kaptor. There's the Philistines. He wants to say that he wants to say that uh, 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 Goliath, you know, from Gath, was a giant, the offspring, the uh, hybrid offspring of an angel. We what? Goliath was was a Philistine. He was a Philistine. All right. And he came as a, he's a, one of the descendants of Cush, who is a son of Ham. You got it? Who is a son of Noah. Now you're getting it. Who is a great, 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 great grandson of Seth, who is the son of Adam. See, folks, they all came. They all came from one person, Adam. He strikes out. He strikes out when he starts messing with the genealogical record. And he wants you He wants you to go down swinging too. Oh, no, friends. If you know the Bible, see, you've got to pay attention to these little things. You know why? Because if you don't pay attention to the little things, you're going to mess up when it comes to something a little bigger. Now, watch this. Let's see if we can get over here to strike number two. All right? That was strike number one. Here's strike number two. Strike number two... Uh, has to do has to do a little bit more with genealogy. Now see what happens when you miss once, when you swing at a bad pitch, you might find that you know now I'm suckered in. Now I'm going to swing at the next one. All right. Listen again what Mr. Uh, James says about the genealogy of David. People, and we're going to be demonstrating that we are in fact his relatives. And the Jewish people are not. In fact, he disowns the Jewish people in many places in the New Testament. Now, we know also that Queen Elizabeth II today is, in fact, a literal descendant of King David. And uh, there's a parable of the 153 fishes in the New Testament. And it turns out that from Adam to Queen Elizabeth II, there are 153 generations in this genealogical record. So the, all these numbers in the Bible have meanings, and we are going to investigate these meanings. All right, so here's the gimmick. You know, here's the gimmick. Well, there's 153 fishes, and that means 153 generations. Well, <clears throat> you know, I'm sure there's 153 generations between a lot of people. But that doesn't mean that it's noted in, a, in a, an, a, an account about fishes. But, see... He's basing, it, he's basing your lack of knowledge on genealogies on, uh, or he's, he's basing the fact that you don't know the genealogies. Now he's going to fool you with another one. All right? It's just like a pitcher. You know, a pitcher sets up, a, he sets up a batter. You know, he'll throw a cup on the inside and the next one's coming right down the middle and he caught you looking. All right? Strike you out. Well, he's trying to get you to swing. I'm not buying it. I'm not buying it. Listen to what he says. He says that David is kin to the queen. Now he's going to say it again. What kings do the Jews have? None. Only the Anglo-Saxons, the true Israelites, and the true Judahites, and Queen Elizabeth is indeed the 153rd descendant of Adam in this world. 
She has a genealogical record. All the European monarchs are descended from the tribes of Israel, specifically the house of Judah, the house of David. They have these genealogies in their possession, but they are not being made public because the Jews have so corrupted this scripture that by pretending to be something they're not, that people are totally deceived. Now, now let's think about that, folks. They've got the genealogical records, but they don't make them public because somebody's been lying. Well, you know what? If you've got the truth, why don't you lay it out there and prove it? Oh, no, we can't put it out there because somebody's been lying about it and they've been deceiving people. Well, hello, isn't that your job is to stop the deception? Shine the light of truth? Jesus said in John 3, 19, 20, that, that men love the darkness and hate the light because their deeds are evil. If, you, if these so-called Jews are corrupting the scriptures and corrupting the genealogies, why don't you put it out there? You've got the truth. And I would like to ask this too. Has he seen it? I wonder if Mr. Eli James has seen these genealogical records. They're all kept so public, I mean so private. They're kept so private and so secured. I wonder if he's even seen it. Hmm. Makes you wonder, doesn't it? Makes you wonder what he's putting his faith on. He's putting his faith on something that I don't think he's even seen because by his own admission they keep it private and they don't show it to anybody because it's the truth. Friends, I think you hide a lie. I think that's generally the way it works. You hide a lie and you tell the truth. If you've got the truth, you show it. You know, if something's going to prove your point or vindicate you, <clears throat> you put the truth out there. I don't know if anybody says, well, it's the truth, I'm going to hide it, and, the, and it's a lie, so I'm, I'm going to let it go. Oh, no, no. You, you hide a lie, you, you try to keep a lie going. Put it out there. Oh, well, we got the genealogical records, but we, we're not going to show it. So we don't show it because somebody's over there being mean and deceitful. So we're just not going to show it. Now, friends, that's, that's, that's dangerous. That's dangerous. Now, I want to remind you what Mr. Eli said we're supposed to do, or not supposed to do, excuse me. Whenever he was trying to explain where all these races came from, and how to get around all these genealogical records. Listen to what he says. He knew his wife, verse 17, and she conceived. Where did she come from? Who was this wife? Well, we can speculate. Either there was an existing race of people besides Adam and Eve, and that's our position in, in Christian identity, because we're not told in the Bible, and we have to be specific here. We can't make assumptions about where Cain's wife came from. The Bible does not tell us that Adam and Eve had other children before Cain found his wife. No, Cain found his wife from the existing races of this planet. It doesn't tell us which race he chose, chose this wife from. Well, we can speculate. We can't make assumptions. Well, we can speculate. We can't make assumptions. Well, we can speculate. We can't make assumptions. Now, friends... I mean, I, I, I don't know. You have to have, you have to have help misunderstand that. We can't speculate, or he says we can speculate where Cain got his wife. It has to be from all these other races that the Bible doesn't talk about where they came from. But we know it can't be from other sons and daughters of Adam and Eve because the Bible doesn't say they had any. Well, the Bible doesn't say that God created these other races either. See? Now, we, we can speculate, but we can't make assumptions. Friends, <laughs> I, I don't know. I, I don't know about you, but... We can't make assumptions. We can't make assumptions. We can't make assumptions. We can't make assumptions. Look up the word speculate. I looked at the word speculate in the thesaurus. And you know what one of the synonyms of speculate is? It's to, it's an assumption. So we can't speculate, or we can speculate, he can speculate, but we can't make assumptions. Friends, I'll tell you what, I don't make assumptions 
when it comes to the Bible. If it's right there in the Bible, I'm going to take it. Now, I found it very interesting that he was willing to speculate uh, something that wasn't in the Bible, but he wasn't going to let anybody else make an assumption based on something that is in the Bible. In Genesis 5 and verse 4, uh, we know that Adam and Eve had other sons and daughters after Seth, but the fact of the matter is, that doesn't mean that they didn't have sons and daughters after Cain. See? Look at this. And the days of Adam after he had begotten Seth were 800 years, and he begat sons and daughters. Just because it doesn't say that he, did, that he begat sons and daughters after Cain and Abel doesn't mean that he didn't do it. And let me tell you, folks, you're having children 800 years? I think there's going to be a lot of people in there. There's going to be, there's going to be a lot of folks out there for, for uh, uh, able to choose from, I mean, Cain to choose from. But instead, we've got to have this far-fetched idea, you know, right out of Hollywood, that says, well, we have to develop some other races of people. Well, how are you going to get them on the other side of the flood? Well, we're going to have to make sure that the flood is local and wiped out all the race mixers. Well, where did all the race mixers come from? Well, they left before the flood. Well, what's the point of sitting in the flood? See? That's like saying I'm going to put off a bug bomb in my house to kill all the roaches, but before I do it, all the roaches left. But I'm going to set it off anyway. What's the point? What's the point? Now, friends, you, you've got to put common sense over here in the shoebox in order to believe what this guy says. You can speculate, but you can't make assumptions. And that's all his doctrine's based upon, friends, is one big speculation. That's strike two. That's strike two. Now, uh, I tell you what, Scotty. We're, uh, let's go ahead and put the phone lines up because I know we got a uh, uh, little late start. We might uh, uh, come on. Uh, we might get to our next strike momentarily. But look at this, folks. I want to remind you what the Bible says in regard to what Mr. Eli James and the Christian Identity Movement are basing their doctrines on. In 1 Timothy 1, in verse 4, I, I'm not trying to read. I'm trying to get this thing on. There we go. 1 Timothy 1, verse 4, Neither give heed to fables and endless genealogies. But that's what his doctrine is rooted, based upon. Is an endless genealogy for 153 generations. There's Queen... Elizabeth II. And so therefore we know that she's from the seed of David. But what about Prince Charles? What's he 154? Where's the, where's, the, where's the 154th fish? You know? And then there, who's the guy that just got married? William? You know? He's going to take on, well, there's got to be another fish here somewhere. See, friends, you see how it works? Endless genealogies which minister questions rather than godly edifying which is in faith, so do. Titus 3 verse 9 But avoid foolish questions and genealogies and contentions and strivings about the law for they are unprofitable and vain. Now friends, does this strike you as odd that the very things that this doctrine that Mr. James is trying to convince us of contradicts the Bible in so many places that he has to twist it, you know, he has to manipulate it, circle, circle around it, go over it, under it, around it, through it in order to get his doctrine. Now, the reason I started off with this genealogy stuff is because it just shows that the little things, if you're dishonest in the little things, you're going to be dishonest in the big things. You're going to be dishonest in the big things. And that's exactly where we are. That's exactly where we are. Because the next thing we're going to show you, friends, is some severe, I'm going to say severe dishonesty, great dishonesty. Because the, 
the next point that we're going to bring up is actually having to do with them translating their own Bible. Now, I'm going to see if I can find this clip. Let me see if I find this video clip where he says we are uh, getting, uh, we're, we're working on our own Bible. And um, actually, I meant to have y'all looking for where he says that. Uh, let's see. But I don't know where I don't know it's in it's in the the brick thing. Uh, where do I know where he says Bible? Getting his own Bible. I don't have it. Mhm. Mm yeah. Mhm. Mm anyway, all right. Oh, uh, it's not it. that says it, but it's not it. Anyway, I want you to, uh, let's let's move on. Here here's what he says. In uh, I asked him, I asked Mr. James about their translation, their Bible. I sure know. I thought I had that call pulled off. Uh, where he said they're have, starting their own Bible. Uh, but I sure don't see it here. Nonetheless, uh, boy, that makes me upset. <clears throat> Nonetheless, I asked him about their new translation. All right. Now, somebody called in and asked him about Galatians three. Let me put it up here. Galatians three twenty six. All right, and he starts reading. He starts reading in verse thirteen. All right. How come? Let me go ahead and get the video plan. Get my Bible on the program. And now to Abraham and his seed were the promises made. Paul is absolutely confirming that these promises were made to no one else but to Abraham and his descendants. And to seeds as of men. He said not. And to seeds, not to genealogies, but to this one genealogy as of many, but as of one, and your seed, and to your seed, which is Christ. Now this is a horrible translation, because the promises were not made to Christ. The promises, as Paul just affirmed, the promises were made to Abraham and his seed. Christ is the promised one. This verse is horribly translated, because the promises were not made to Jesus Christ. He is the promised one. This verse should read, and to your seed, which is anointed. All right. The Greek word anointed does not always mean capital C Christ. It means the anointed people of Israel. This verse is horribly translated. This verse should read, and to your seed which is anointed. All right. Horrible translation. It should read, to your seed which is anointed. Now, he was reading Galatians 3 and verse 16. Let me back up here to it. All right. He says, this is a horrible translation, and to thy seed which is Christ. He said it should be to thy seed which is anointed, and anointed people. All right. Now, I want to show you how dishonest they are, friends. The Bible that he likes, that he recommended to, to us, and it's the Bible that, that uh, I bought a copy of. I bought a copy of it from them. Uh, it's not in printed form yet. It's just in electronic form. It's called the Christinogenia, Christinogenia, and this is the uh, introduction to it. Now, I'm going to read this introduction because I think it's important, a part of it. Uh, in this introduction, it says, and I apologize because it's, it's so small, but it says, the, the version uh, 
of my edition of the Christ and Eugenia New Testament contains the translation alone, which with a few exceptions is based upon the second edition of the Nestle Alond Greek New Testament. Will you go get me that? It's, at, it's in the, the back part of my uh, bag, the blue book. Now, so it's the Nestle Alon Greek New Testament. That's, no, that's the one he used to translate the Christogenia, uh, Christogenia uh, <clears throat> New Testament. Here it is, the Nestle Alon, uh, Nestle Alon uh, Greek New Testament. I don't know if I, the light's going to hit that just right. There you go. There you go. There you go. That's good. That's all right. That's good. That this 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 is this book. All right. It's a Greek New Testament, and that's what he used. Okay. So, I'm I'm saying all I like to say. I'm going to show you that they're not even dis, they're not even honest with their own translation. Now, watch this. In. Uh, let me get back here to my, my thing. All right. All right. I, I showed this. The other night. And here is the copy of this Greek, Greek Testament. And here's the word. Here's the word. And he says that it should be translated the anointed people. All right. The anointed people. Now, when we get to another verse on down, verses 26 through 29, the same words are used, same words are used, but they don't translate them all the same. As a matter of fact, as a matter of fact, if you look at the, uh, if you look at the way they translate it, notice this. They translated Christ in, in most of these other verses. They only translated anointed people in the verse that they wanted it to be people. You see what I'm saying? They're not even consistent. And he says, well, sometimes it should be translated anointed people. Well, how, who gets to determine who translates it anointed people versus Christ or the anointed one? Now notice, in verse 29 it says, But ye are Christ. If ye are Christ, then ye are the offspring of Abraham. If they were consistent, they would have translated this, anointed ones too, just like they did in verse 16. But they didn't do it. Now my point in this, friends, is to show you that they're dishonest. They're dishonest. They're even dishonest in their own version, in their own translations. They're just like the Jehovah's Witness. The Jehovah's Witness got problems with the New World Translation. They, they translated a book so they get their doctrine and even their book has problems with it. You know why? Because they're trying to get their doctrine and they're not concerned about the truth. You're on the word from the Lord. You're on the word from the Lord. Hello. You're on the word from the Lord. All right. So, so you see what I'm saying? They're, they're, they're not even consistent in their, in their translations. And Mr. James ad, admitted, he said, that the guy who translated this admitted that he had an agenda when he translated it. That's why he used a Hebrew word like Yahshua for Jesus. When that's not the Hebrew word, or Yahweh, that's not the Hebrew, or that's, that's not the Greek word. This is a Greek testament, not Hebrew. And so they admit they have an agenda, and even when they have an agenda, they're not consistent in keeping that agenda. They're dishonest. They're dishonest. And I'm simply trying to point out that if you, if you are not careful about things like little things like genealogies, and you don't check out things that you might think are boring and insignificant, you'll buy into their genealogies, and then the next thing you know, you're buying into this business about the white people is, is God's chosen race, and that everybody else is incidental, 
and that the only way you're going to be saved is if you follow the white guy. Well, you know what? There's a lot of white guys I don't want to follow. I don't want to follow Billy Graham. He's a white guy. I don't want to follow John Hagee. Who's the example? Who's the example of the white people that we're supposed to be following? See? How about, how about God gave the law to all mankind through Christ? And now everybody can follow that law and everybody can obey it, whether you're red, yellow, black, or white. See how it works? But if you miss up on the little things, you don't pay attention to the little things, you're going to find yourself in a world of hurt on the big things, all right? Now, when, uh, when we hear Mr. Eli talking about it, a horrible translation, I think he ought to be saying the same thing about their translation. It's not consistent. Would he say it's a horrible translation? He should. He should. Now, let me show you how they're inconsistent. Here's another verse. In chapter 4, Galatians chapter 4, verse, 20, verse 19, here is where they have, right, right here, my little children whom I, travail, whom I travail once more until the anointed have taken shape among you. Now that's the same word they translated Christ in another verse, and then they translated anointed ones in another verse. They're, they're trying to do the rope-a-dope on you. They're trying to trick you. You buy into their little things. You buy into their little, their little idiosyncrasies, their little uh, doctrines. And pretty soon, you're not, you're not being careful. Friends, we're trying to get you to open your eyes and realize how important it is to study even the little things. And that's why we're taking our time to try to, to, try to help you, to try to uh, help you to see the truth on these things or to help you see the error of what they're saying. Now, I would like for Mr. Eli to come back and maybe let's do some discussion on the covenants. That's really what he said he was going to do the first time. He was going to, he was going to discuss the covenants. I think I might could even pull up uh, his email where he told me that, they were, that this is what he's going to discuss, which it didn't bother me that he didn't do it. Uh, I think he might he might now wish that he would have, because uh, he sure didn't uh, he sure didn't state his case very well. I, I didn't believe in uh, in this matter. I'm gonna see if I can find his email. Yeah. Four minutes long. No, it's at, it's four minutes. Okay. All right. All right. Um, let me see if I can find it here. Which I, I don't think you're gonna be able to see it. Okay. All right. <clears throat> um, may have to get one of you to find this for me. All right. Four minutes. Well, uh, well, the discussion is whether or not the King James has any mistakes in it. No, the discussion is, is, is blood in the original manuscripts. Now, right. well, okay. so, so what, original what original text, Greek text, do you use that does not have blood in it in Acts 17, 26? What you have to do, King James has made a horrible thunder and cast away their courts for Israel. Reference to the anointed routinely translates the words anointed in the New Testament as Christ in the capital C when the, the verses are actually talking about the anointed people Israel. Uh, a man namely Abraham, it's still an interpretation of that, of that passage. Okay? Then uh, we have to understand apologizing. Okay? It's taking well, quite well, we can, well, we can move on to something else. I mean, this might be something that we bring back up. But I'm just saying I find it very interesting that every verse that we're bringing up that gives you trouble, it's always a problematic verse or their translators well, mess something up. This is, this is the problem that we in Christian identity have with Judeo-Christianity is that they, these words have not been translated correctly. 
So and what? So what do you do? Why don't you translate your own Bible? In thinking that's uh, in the world today. So why don't you why don't you translate your own Bible then? Well, that's what we're doing. So so now so really you're being I have, like, a, I have a man translating directly from the Hebrew, and we already have a Greek uh, New Testament uh, translated directly from the Greek. Now you know said he said the problem that we in Christian identity have with Judeo Christian Christianity is that they've mistranslated so many of these words, and I just show you that they've mistranslated even when they're trying to translate it with a bias. They can't even do it right. Now friends, oh the tangled web we weave, you know. What's the saying? When it wants you practice, practice to deceive. That's what they're doing. And um, I remember, I mean when, when Marty Roberts came on with his, with his uh, uh, Pentecostal doctrine, we had him tangled up in a web, and I think maybe I should put uh, Mr. Eli James in a web too. Because what we're, what we're getting down to showing is dishonesty. And friends, that's really what all false doctrine comes down to, a dishonest heart, a dishonest heart. Christian identity movement, you know, this idea that the white race is supreme and the elect of God and the Israel of God, I'll tell you what, some of the, the, some of the folks that I've, that I've seen and dealt with Associated with, with the Christian identity movement and the KKK, I hope that that wouldn't be the, the representative of, you know, the true Israel of God. I mean, if that's the true Israel of God, I'd just soon be an Edomite or Jew, whatever you want to call them. See that? Now, here we have it. You know, we're going to, tra we're going to have our own translation because we don't like, we don't like the fact that our doctrine is not in the King James. All right. You don't, you don't, a word from the Lord. Hello? You on there? Yes, James. This is he. Uh, yes, James. Uh, could you tell me how I could get a copy of this Greek Bible that Mr. James was referring to? The Greek Bible that he's referring to or the one that they're translating? The one, the one that he... Uh, Do you want the Greek the, one? The one that you showed on TV just a few minutes ago. This little book right here. Now this. Hold up, where I can see it. This is this is a Greek New Testament. Can you read Greek? Is that the one that Mr. James was uh, uh, quoted from? No, this is the one that he translated that they translated their English Bible from. This is all Greek. This is. This, it's, what, all, it's all Greek. Yeah, but now they're translating an English Bible out of this one. In other words, they're taking this, this Greek text and they're translating their own Bible out of it. Does that make sense? No, I'm confused. Oh, okay. The, uh, you, see, you see on the screen here? Can you see this? Oh, sorry about that. Yeah, yeah, I see that, yeah. All right. Back here. This right here? The, this yeah. is all Greek. And what they did, they took this and they translated it into English. Right. And they got this. Okay. Now, what? Which one do you want? The the one, the one you said you got. They translated Greek into that Bible. That's what I want. You want the English? You want the English version of it? Right. All right. The only place you can get it is online. That you have to buy it online because it's not in it's not in a book form. Oh, it's not. Yeah. It's it's just in a it's in an electronic form, electronic file. And I think it's five dollars. From from one of their websites. Do you have the website available? No, I, I don't have it available. Uh, let me just let me see if I can. Uh, he he probably tells me. Let me see if I can come back here. I would say it'd be. Uh, you could probably type in, Christ, Ogenia. Uh, oh, oh what? Christ on Yeah, right. I don't know. It's <laughs> Just stick to the King James and you'll be all right. Uh, I don't know if I can find uh, the link to it right now. He's got it. I've got an email from him somewhere. Oh, okay. Here I'm it is. It's, 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 it's Christ, C-H-R-I-S-T, Christ, O-G-E-N-E-A, New Testament. Oh. G-E-N-E-A. E-A. E-A. All, all together. 
If, okay. you, if you go online, you type in that and then New Testament, and I bet you'll find a, a website for it. Okay, that's Christ, like C H R I S T. That's correct. G E N E A. New Testament. New Testament. Yeah. Christogenia. So look at that. All right, I'm out of time. I appreciate your call. Thank appreciate, you. Appreciate your call. I'm out of time. Thank you, Bob. All right, folks. Uh, yeah, you'll you'll find the inconsistency there. All right. Well, I want to remind you to stay tuned for uh, a religious review coming up after the news. Uh, I will tell you that if you missed the debate on Sunday night, religious review is going to be an encore presentation of that. We're going to show it again, show it in entirety. You can watch and you can just see if I took Mr. Eli out of context or whatever. Uh, I didn't do it, but uh, I think we had a good discussion, and I hope we come back. He comes back for some more, but. Till next time, friends, I appreciate you watching. Always remember to ask, what does the Bible say? You'll always get a word from the Lord. Then you'll be able to examine religious doctrines and do your own religious review.